Good morning again, and thank you very much for the invitation. Once again, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Gisport for such a wonderful job that they have done, for the invitation as well as for the organization of this conference. We love being here and uh, we love getting to know all our Italian colleagues. Congra congratulations also on, on becoming IFSPT, or, or, on gaining the accreditation process for the IFSPT um, um, sports physiotherapist. Now, my talk this morning is going to be on taping for patellofemoral pain, and Karen really nicely introduced the topic. So I'll, I'll now um, add a little bit more to what Karen said in terms of how we may use taping um, as an adjunct to exercises and as an adjunct to um, education, as Karim has discussed. So the overview then of what my talk will contain is just discussing briefly a little bit about taping types and what kind of taping materials we have and what are some of the intended purposes and possible effects of taping. I'll go through some clinical reasoning process for managing patellofemoral pain and then patellofemoral pain and patella tracking um, how we may address it, as well as the role of tape in management of patellofemoral pain. And I did my best here to also put it in Italian, so I hope it's translated quite well, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so um, in terms of taping, well, what is taping? And, and we're talking mainly now about therapeutic taping. Um, back in the late 1800s, the rigid adhesive tape became um, started to be used and it started to be used mainly in the use of um, ankle injuries and it was first published in the New York Medical Journal in 1895. Um, since to the 2008 Beijing Olympics the elastic adhesive or the kinesiology or kinesiotherapy taping has become popular and since then it has exploded into the market. There are more than four or five hundred different types. Some of them are two-way stretch, some of them are four-way stretch, there are different thicknesses, and some of them have even got um, perforations in for dry needling. So it's important that you're aware of what materials you may have around and what's accessible in your clinic when we start discussing some of the evidence now for the use of taping in clinic. So then as clinicians, if we have rigid, we've got elastic adhesive, we've got elastic adhesive with different stretch components, what do we use? When? Why? And it's important that if we're going to be deciding what we're going to use, that we base our decision as much as, as it is possible on evidence base and clinical reasoning. So in terms of evidence base, there's an explosion also of literature now, um, of studies being performed on taping and looking at the, the effects or the intended purposes of tape. And I put a summary of those purposes here. Not all of them have yet been um, disproven or proven, but it is what most of the time is actually being investigated. So one of the key effects that we would look at that is actually being addressed by, um, in the literature is pain reduction. Does tape help in pain reduction? Um, and um, there is some evidence that there is some um, early um, relief of pain with the use of uh, taping, and we'll talk about some of those in this talk. Also, the um, effect on edema, there, is every, um, there are studies that look at the effect of tape on tissue deloading or unloading, uh, looking at the effects of tape for biomechanical or mechanical changes, looking at neuromuscular effects of tape, and that m might include muscle facilitation or inhibition and proprioception enhancement. But also what we must not forget is the psychological effects of tape. And there are, there are more studies now being um, published that talk about um, the athlete's perception of, of how they feel, how confident they feel when they have the tape on, and, and uh, how that might enable them to actually um, do their exercises or participate or return to sport and return to play. And last but not least is the use of tape for injury or re-injury prevention and return to sport. So I will not be covering all this today because it's not the scope of this talk, but it is just to make you aware that these are, there are a lot of studies out there that discuss these effects. So as I mentioned before, it's important when we're looking at addressing our um, patient with the patellofemoral pain that we do use a clinical reasoning approach, we use an evidence base, and we ensure that we have outcome measures to evaluate the effectiveness of what we do. 
So we will do a full assessment, we'll establish what key outcome measures are relevant to our patient and to their condition that we're going to use. We're going to then look at developing a management approach that's based on the athlete's goals and what, um, whether they're returning back to play or returning back to sport and looking at then an evidence-based intervention. And when I say evidence-based, where we have research evidence, we use it, and if, we, if there is none and we rely on our clinical expertise and evidence, then we ensure that we use outcome measures to evaluate the effectiveness um, to ensure that what we're doing is effective. So patellofemoral pain, and, and as Karim said before, it's, um, it's widely known on, as to what the definition is, but I'll, I've summarised it here from Kay Crossley's um, consensus statement. And she talk, they talk about pain around or behind the patella, which is aggravated by at least one activity that loads the patellofemoral joint during weight bearing on the flex knee. For example, squ squatting, stair ambulation, jogging, running, hopping, jumping. So as you can see, these are all activities that potentially we can be using also as part of our outcome measures and evaluating the effectiveness of what we're doing. So then an overview of the clinical presentation of the patellofemoral uh, patient with a patellofemoral pain. They will be reporting some impairments. Um, could be an the anterior knee pain. Um, it could be also medial knee pain, decreased knee range of motion, Muscle weakness will be evident, and it, and it could be around the hip and the knee, as well as the foot control, muscle tightness, and motor control changes. They will also be reporting activity functional limitations, such as being getting pain going downstairs, getting pain with a single leg squat or a lunge. And that would lead to participation restriction including not being able to participate in exercise or in sport. And I base this um, largely on the ICF framework. So this study then that was done in, um, by Seth, um, you can see that they looked at um, seeing if it was possible to subgroup some of the patellofemoral pain patients. And more and more now we're hearing both about people with osteoarthritis as well as people with uh, patellofemoral pain that there may be different types of phenotypes or different type of groups of people. Now in, in this study what they looked at um, grouping the patients was based on their presentation and they used a group of tests, um, uh, clinical tests, muscle length tests, muscle strength tests as well as some mobility tests to be able to um, look at uh, the subgroups of people with telephermal pain syndrome. And I raise this because it's going to be uh, um, important for us to understand this as we're going to use them towards our management of these patients. So the, the three groups that they classified them was the ones that were strong, in other words, there was no muscle weakness, the ones that had weak muscles, but they had tightness in their muscles, and then the ones that had weak muscles, but also pronated foot. And, and I'll um, come to the relevance of that shortly. So then it's important that we're looking at the patella and some of the underlying factors that might lead to the abnormal patella tracking. And some of the things that the, the previous authors looked in the classification might actually predispose the patella to maltracking or abnormal um, positioning. So some of the things that then you'll see, you'll find in your assessment is imbalance between vastus medialis obliquus and vastus lateralis activation. Also, you might find that you've got tightness in the muscles, including the quadriceps and the ITB. There may be some tight lateral retinaculum, especially when you're doing some of the medial glides of the patella. And that, that might also lead, especially if the deep retinaculum is tight, it might lead to that lateral tilting of the patella. And you may also have identified that they have increased foot pronation and tibial internal rotation on your assessment. As well as weakness of the hip external rotators and, and gluteals. And as we've heard from Karim, that actually implementing exercises at the hip has had positive effects in reducing pain in, in the patellofemoral joint. So all of these forces will be acting around the patella and, and as the, person is, the patient is participating in sports and exercise, then you're getting a lot of the um, deviations or the maltracking of the patella. 
So some of the things that we can do then in treatment is actually look at addressing some of these underlying factors and, and see if we can then um, provide a better tracking position of the patella through exercise and through our treatment. And this is where also taping might become um, useful. But in terms of being able to look at, um, and Karim introduced Christian Barton, and this paper on the best practice guide to conservative management of patellofemoral pain um, is, is a good outline, and I recommend that from the British General Sports Medicine. And Christian outlines in, in this paper and his co-authors that patellofemoral pain is a multimodal condition, and it requires individually tailored multimodal, uh, sorry, multifactorial condition and it's a multimodal management, as Karim said. One of the priorities is immediate relief of pain because that will give us that window of opportunity to then start exercises. And we need to ensure that we give them active rather than passive interventions. If we give a patient passive interventions, they're not empowered. So we need to empower them to be able to start to take care of their own condition. And that's why patient education and activity modification is very, very important. So what are then our management aims and plan? Education, reduce pain, improve function, increase participation, and then eventually return to play and return to sport. And these are some examples of what we might use. So manual therapy, but as Karim said, it's an adjunct to exercise and tape, and we might use taping as an adjunct as well, not in isolation. Increase muscle control and look at some examples of exercises, and Karim also outlined a good number of exercises that we might be able to use. And look at biomechanical correction. Is there anything in terms of the rotation of the femur, the rotation of the tibia that might be contributing to the patella maltracking and also the pronation of the foot? And once again, we will use exercises, taping, or orthotics. So I've outlined here some of the areas we might be able to use tape for um, in managing patellofemoral pain and some of the options. So we might want to look at um, femoral rotation. So as you're doing, performing the single leg squat, quite often you'll see that if the knee, knee um, deviates medially and you're getting increased internal rotation at the, at the femur, um, it usually is related to weak gluteals and external rotators. So we can actually use tape to mechanically um, provide some support uh, um, and, and enable the, the athlete to then do the exercises, hopefully pain-free, while they're facilitating muscle activation. And, and there is a study that's actually used this in using elastic tape, um, and clinically we've used the rigid tape quite effectively, and I'll talk about that soon. Um, tibial rotation is another, is another um, way we might be able to use tape to actually reduce internal rotation of the tibia during the, the lunge or the single leg squat. And then there's taping for patella correction and both taping, rigid tape and elastic tape has been used, as well as tape to activate muscles around the knee, particularly vastus medialis obliguus. And then tape for antipronation, and there's a study that looked at elastic tape um, and its effect on patella, pa uh, patella femoral pain, as, as well as uh, using rigid tape. And I'll expand on this in the upcoming slides. And I keep reminding you as well that tape options are always as an adjunct to exercise and other treatment. They're not ever used in isolation. Now, Jenny McConnell, who was the, the first person to have really made the patellofemoral taping very, very popular, um, and she was instrumental in actually in her thinking and has served physiotherapy well, but she made a really, really um, important statement Tape could be used to unload painful structures and with reduced pain, a therapist has an opportunity to direct treatment at the underlying cause or causes. So it gives us that window of opportunity then to be able to um, have a, um, teach them the patient effective exercise and effective management while they're not experiencing pain. It might also have the effect of where you're not getting pain, you're not getting that pain inhibition of the muscles. So it's, uh, it's, once it's important then to consider. 
And this systematic review by Christian Barton, once again, is a, is a very useful one to look at. And it's been mentioned in the consensus statement as well. And it um, talks about patella taping for patellofemoral pain. And it's, it, they did a, a good meta-analysis of 20 studies. But the conclusion is that moderate, there's moderate evidence that tailored or customized to the patient to control lateral tilt, glide, and spin and untailored patella taping provide immediate pain reduction. However, tailored patella taping promotes earlier onset of vastus medialis oblique contraction relative to vastus lateralis contraction. And so what do they mean by tailored taping? And I've got some pictures here to show you, and this is from a book on therapeutic taping that Mark Brown and myself have published. Um, and um, it's got a step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually do the taping techniques. But it's important with this one that you look at, if the patella is tilted, then you will do a, a tilt first. And that's the first picture here. However, if a tilt is not required, if the patella is not laterally tilted, you do not need to tilt the patella medially. And that's what they mean by a tailored taping technique. This second slide here is actually, um, you can see a medial glide being performed. Once again, if the patella is sitting laterally, then you will add the medial glide. And then the last one is looking at rotation of the patella. And so if you can see the inferior pole is rotated laterally, then you will rotate it medially. Whereas if you see it rotated medially, you will rotate it laterally. More often it is lateral that you will find it, but that is what is meant by the tailored taping technique and looking at assessing the patient and then using the taping that's individualized to the patient. Now this review article looked at effects of kinesio taping versus McConnell taping for patellofemoral pain syndrome. As I mentioned before, in, in recent years, the, the, the kinesio taping or the elastic adhesive taping has become very popular. And what they have found is that the um, kinesio taping and the McConnell taping can both reduce pain, um, immediate pain, but the McConnell taping did have an effect on patellar alignment. So their conclusion then is that the kinesio taping technique can be used for muscles to relieve pain but cannot change patellar alignment unlike the, McCon unlike the McConnell taping. And um, Karim explained this graph before from the consensus statement, which um, is very useful for us to refer to. And I've summarized here the three points that the authors of the consensus statement, Kay Crossley and, and colleagues made about the use of patellar tape or brace and pain relief. And, and the key here is that what they have concluded, that there's an immediate pain reduction with tailored patellar tape. However, there was no immediate pain relief with medially directed rigid or elastic patella tape. So if you're only going to do a medial glide, you're not going to get the same effects as if you were going to add a tilt and a rotation. Untailored medial directed tape and exercise were no better than exercise alone in reducing pain. Once again, it was no effect. Um, so no benefit in reducing pain for knee brace combined with exercise versus exercise alone or a knee brace versus a placebo. So once again, as Karim said, that's freely available on the British Journal of Sports Medicine and we recommend that you do have access to it. So what about femoral rotation taping that, that I mentioned before? So this study here looked at effects of femoral rotational taping on pain. And what they did is they had six females with patellofemoral pain syndrome and eight, eight healthy controls. And the outcome measures they looked at was 3D hip and patella kinematics um, using an electromagnetic tracking system. They looked at EMG of gluteals and rectus femoris, and they looked at pain during a single leg stance. And they looked at three randomized conditions um, with um, sham taping, femoral taping, and with kinesio tape, the, the elastic tape, and no tape. And this is the technique they used. And they found that both femoral rotational and sham sham tapes reduce pain for patellofemoral pain syndrome. However, the group with patellofemoral pain syndrome had increased hip adduction angle during the single leg stance. And femoral rotational tape significantly, significantly shifted patella into posterior and distal positions 
in the patellofemoral pain group compared to no tape. So we're seeing some effect here now for the femoral ro um, rotation tape. So the conclusion then is that it can decrease pain and alter patellofemoral kinematics in a female um, population with patellofemoral pain. And this is the femoral rotation pain uh, taping using the rigid tape, which we have found very useful clinically um, when a patient is, is doing the single leg squat or the lunge test. And there are no studies at the moment investigating this particular technique. We, we're looking at some in, um, in, um, with uh, some of our colleagues in Australia. And um, so once again, if you're going to use it clinically, we um, I recommend that you use outcome measures to evaluate the effectiveness of what you're going to do. And this is a study that um, I was part of at the University of Limerick, um, looking at the immediate effect of two types of taping on pain and lower limb kinematics during a lunge or a single leg test in people with patellofemoral pain. And I'd like to acknowledge Amanda Clif Clifford, um, my colleague in the University of Limerick and her students for this study. So we looked at three conditions, no taping, the McConnell patella taping that I just described, and the tibial external rotation taping um, on the tibia. It was a repeated measures single cohort study. And we looked at the numerical pain rating scale as well as the 3D kinematics during a lunge and during a single leg squat. So I've just got the tibial rotation taping here so that you can see it a little bit more clearly. And it's actually done, it's a, one of the mulligan techniques, and it's done with the rotation as well as with a, a manual glide, external rotation glide on the tibia at the same time. The results were then we had 23 participants um, Equal, nearly equal number of male and female with patellofemoral pain syndrome, and we found that there was less pain for patella taping compared to no taping, and less pain for tibial external rotation taping compared to no taping. However, there was no difference between the two taping techniques in their effect on pain, and not, none of the conditions had any effect on the kinematics. So in other words, both the, ki the knee taping techniques may be effective for pain reduction, immediate pain reduction, despite no effect on kinematics during single leg squat or lunge. Now, the, I mentioned before about the antipronation taping at the ankle, and this study looked at a kinesio taping technique um, for antipronation, and they looked at people with patellofemoral pain and pronated feet. And they had 18 subjects with uh, patellofemoral pain, and pronated feet, and they also looked at EMG on vastus medialis obliquus and vastus lateralis during a forward descending step. And they had no tape, elastic tape, and also used foot form exercises. And what they found is that there was no significant difference in vastus medialis obliquus or vastus lateralis muscle activity or in the muscle activity ratio in any of the three foot conditions. They did, however, find that in the, if we look at this condition here where they're doing the foot activation exercises, there was increased activation of the abductor, abductor hallucis muscle. So the augmented low dye antipronation taping technique has not been studied in patellofemoral pain, but as Karim said, orthosis have been studied and the use of orthotics. And although they have, have been found to be effective long-term wise, they have been found to be effective short-term wise. So you can then use the antipronation taping um, in a similar fashion to see if it will actually reduce symptoms at the knee. And, and then once again, is the window of opportunity for, your, for the exercises. The augmented low dye antipronation taping has been found to be effective in people with um, uh, chronic, sorry, with um, exercise related leg pain. And it's also been found to be effective in, in decreasing tibialis posterior activity. So tapping for knee muscle control then, and, and I'll, um, I'll just go through this a little bit quicker just so that we can be ready for our break. Uh, so the patella taping um, did not change vastus medialis and vastus lateralis EMG once again, as we've heard in a previous study. And the McConnell taping in this study by uh, Kim Burnell, um, they found that even though it didn't affect the VMO or VL timing onset, the therapeutic tape led to significant increases in peak knee flexion. 
And in this study by Sally Cowan, they found that medially directed patellar tape significantly reduced pain versus a placebo vertically directed tape. So therapeutic and placebo tape did not alter EMG activity. And this, this study um, is interesting because they used a technique um, on vastus lateralis to inhibit vastus lateralis. And um, they found that there was a change in the vastus lateralis timing in asymptomatic subjects. And this is what that taping technique looks like. Um, and it's, um, this is actually one of our aerial skiers who I, was, um, I worked with at the Vancouver Winter Olympics. And um, she had had two ACL reconstructions on her left knee, but she came to see us in the clinic with patellofemoral pain in her right knee. And, um, and uh, of course, we did a lot of exercises and, and EMG biofeedback, um, but we also used taping. And um, this taping she found very useful in actually reducing the activity of vastus lateralis and enable um, the activation of VMO and the exercises. And in fact, when she won gold, she was taped on both legs with all different, this taping technique as well as uh, a K tape on the left leg. So you can see, and, and that was so because she felt more comfortable, she wanted it, and she felt that she would be able to perform better. So once again, it was both the, the clinically effective as well as the psychologically effective taping that we needed to use. Um, this is just a, another taping technique that was developed by Jenny McConnell and it's one, once again, if you've got a patient with patellar fat pat pain, you're going to get muscle changes and, and activation changes due to pain inhibition. So it's important that you unload the fat pad and this taping technique, what, what it does, it actually tilts the inferior pole of the patella upwards so that it's off the fat pad and then you're using an unloading taping technique around it. Once again, outcome measures are recommended to ensure its effectiveness. So then the take home message from, from this morning is that you need to ensure full assessment of the patellofemoral pain, a patient with patellofemoral pain and use outcome measures which we can then use to guide the effectiveness of your treatment. It is a multimodal management based on individualized athlete-centered goals. So you need to work with your athlete. You need to ensure that they are educated and they are understand and they work with you. Tape is an adjunct to other treatment modalities such as education, manual therapy and exercise. And I once again keep stressing it is not the only thing. But then if we look at rationale for use of tape, we can use tape at the knee, patella or the hip or the tibia or the ankle depending on our assessment findings. And we will use the tape to look at its effectiveness on pain um, we will see if there's any biomechanical changes and look at muscle activation inhibition um, changes. Evaluating treatment effects with our outcome measures. And just to, um, as a take home message as well, is that the tailored patella tape based on assessment findings may be effective in reducing immediate patellofemoral pain, but evidence on its effect on biomechanics is still debatable. Thank you.